This presentation is on the Penman Monteith reference crop ET equation, and it builds on our previous lecture on solving the surface energy balance. So what we're going to cover is the theoretical basis for the Penman Monteith formula, the idea of reference crop ET and how we can use that to estimate crop water use and schedule irrigations. We're going to talk about the ASCE and FAO56 formulations of the Penman Monteith equation, and then just do a, a simple daily ET calculation using the ASCE approach. So, these Penman Monteith equations are a combination model, right? And we talked about that before. You take the energy balance equation, Rn minus G equals H plus Le. You write your two aerodynamic equations, sensible heat flux, H, and latent heat flux, Le. You assume a simplified big leaf model, we call it. There you see with the diagram on the right. And we combine all those ideas together to arrive at our combination equation for the surface energy balance. And again, we covered this in a previous video. So if we put our equations together, uh, there's the energy balance equation with the substitutions in the top on the right hand side where we've substituted our definitions of sensible heat flux and latent heat on the right hand side. We uh, add our uh, definition of saturation vapor pressure and we get that equation there on the bottom, right? So that's the equation that we need to solve. And we talked about the challenges associated with solving that equation, right? Namely, that you've got this surface temperature appearing in the equation and that there's no closed form algebraic solution for the surface temperature. There's only one surface temperature that's going to satisfy this equation. Uh, and um, we can't solve that with algebra. Right. And so Penman um, recognized that and, and, uh, and came up with a way to solve, to get the surface temperature out of the equation and, and go ahead and solve uh, this formula. So Penman, as I mentioned, in 1948, and Penman was an incredible scientist. There's some real interesting um, uh, biographies of uh, work that he did. He found a way to eliminate the surface temperature from the combination equation and solve for evaporation. And Penman was originally working with wet surfaces like open water. Now the key to his derivation was the linearization of the saturation vapor pressure curve. So remember um, that we can plot saturation vapor pressure versus temperature, which you see here the curved line in this graph. and we can get the slope of that vapor pressure curve both at air temperature and surface temperature. Okay, so what Penman did was say, I can take it, if, if air temperature and surface temperature are reasonably close together, I can use that to my advantage, and that was his really clever idea. So he said, uh, I can probably estimate the, if I know the uh, slope of the saturation vapor pressure curve at air temperature, it's probably very close to this term you see here on the right hand side in equation 16. And uh, it says that uh, it's equal to the uh, saturation vapor pressure at surface temperature minus that at air temperature divided by the difference between surface and air temperature. And, um, and then the cool thing about that is, is that you can, if, if you make that assumption, uh, it allows you to come up with this kind of interesting expression for TS minus TA. And if you substitute that back into the sensible heat flux equation, you get this very odd looking equation, which is equation 17, which says I can predict sensible heat flux as a function of the um, a vapor pressure. And, you know, th there's a lot of steps in actually solving this um, whole uh, set of uh, equations, and I've posted a um, complete derivation on um, on our website. So if you're interested in all the math and want a step-by-step -step breakdown of how you go from um, 
go from the equation in the bottom of this slide to the solution uh, using the Penman Monteith's or the Penman strategy, um, you can go re review that document. So that just gives you a little flavor of what was going on. And, and when you finally solve it in Penman's form, it appears like this, where we can predict evaporation or latent heat flux from the surface with these two terms, where you see net radiation minus G on the left-hand side, you see slope of the saturation vapor pressure curve delta and the psychometric constant, right? And that left, the term, the first term on the right-hand side is called the radiation term. And then on the right-hand side, you see the saturation vapor pressure deficit. Up in the top, the aerodynamic resistance. So it's got a wind speed effect, and we call that the aerodynamic term. And sometimes it's very interesting to partition these out and see which one's most important in your particular uh, system that you're working on. Just a reminder, we can calculate the slope of the saturation vapor pressure curve by taking the derivative of Teton's equation. And you can see it here. It's also in your textbook. Uh, we can get that delta term from air temperature, right? Something that's readily available. So Penman's formula is for a wet surface, right? Or open water. So he didn't have a surface resistance in his original equation. So Monteith in 1965, as well as others, and Monteith admits that there was probably a couple of scientists, actually even a graduate student, that proposed the equation before him in its same form. So um, several people sort of figured it out at the same time that we could put a surface resistance in this formula and come up with an equation for dry surfaces. And when I mean dry, I mean something like um, a field, bare soil, okay, vegetated surface, forest. And so in the case of plant canopies, that RS is namely uh, the effect of the stomatal resistance, right, and the leaf area index. And we've, we've studied that previously. So when you finally solve it uh, with the surface resistance in there, this is the final form of the Penman-Monteith equation. And you can see... Um, there is no surface temperature, right? The surface temperature is gone. That's sort of the key thing. And, but the slope of the saturation vapor pressure curve delta is in the equation. We see our Rn minus G, our psychometric constant, aerodynamic and surface resistances, and um, as well as the vapor pressure deficit. So this is the formula that's a uh, used so widely in irrigation management um, around the world. And again, I remind you there, you can see equations 15 through 38 in the Penman Monteith derivation PDF, and it'll show you the full mathematical derivation. Now, there was this other assumptions that Penman made and Monteith both made when they derived these equations. And one of the small errors that Penman made was he did not include the minor effect of surface temperature on net radiation, and we've studied that before. This problem is sometimes addressed by using isothermal net radiation. Sometimes you'll see the RN with an asterisk by it, and that's an indication that um, they're correcting net radiation for that effect. So just look up isothermal net radiation, and you can learn more about that. It assumes that the aerodynamic resistance for heat and vapor are equal, okay? That's usually not too bad of an assumption, but that can also be corrected for in the psychometric constant term. So sometimes you see that uh, fixed there. There's no uh, effect of atmospheric stability, right? We learned that atmospheric stability affects the aerodynamic transport. It's pretty much ignored in this case. Also, this linearization of the, sl of the slope of the saturation vapor pressure curve that allowed Penman to arrive at his solution uh, works fairly well in systems where the air temperature and the surface temperature are fairly close together. But when they diverge, this, this assumption can cause significant errors. You know, fortunately, people that are water managers in irrigated systems are often the people that are using this equation the most. So they're working with fairly well-watered um, vegetated systems. And in that case, 
the air temperature and the surface temperature are reasonably close. So uh, there's been many, many studies where the Penman-Monteith equation has been compared to lysimeters, uh, weighing lysimeters, which give you a um, gravimetric estimate of crop water use, and, that, and found to be um, quite accurate under a wide range of, of situations. So um, there's lots of literature on that. So how do we use the PM equation to estimate crop water use? And most of the time we're using this with what people call the reference ET formula, right? And you're, most of you are very familiar with that, with other classes that you take, uh, where we assume reference conditions, right? So what we really want to do is take weather data, use our Penman-Monteith equation to estimate what evaporation would hypothetically be from this reference surface, and they either use a grass reference or a slightly taller vegetation reference. So they take their weather data, they assume a hypothetical surface, there you see in the upmost um, kind of cartoon there, and that gives you the estimate of your reference crop ET or ET naught. Then people multiply that value by a crop coefficient or KC to get an estimate of the actual water use from their crop, right? And we've probably, most of us have seen these um, KC graphs like you see here, where um, people estimate the, the ET over the course of the year. And um, sometimes there's all kinds of variations of this. You could have a whole class on this where they just, sometimes they adjust the crop coefficient for water stress using this KS formula. And uh, again, there's a lot, a lot available in the literature on that about how the reference crop uh, ET is used uh, to estimate actual water use. Here's one of those crop coefficient curves from Colorado for corn. You can see um, they're early in the, after planting. It's very small, around 0.2, and then it increases up to one or just slightly larger than one at peak. Uh, vegetation cover right there in the middle of the summer there in the, around day 200, day 220. Um, so there's all kinds of papers on estimating crop coefficients. Just remember, and like I said, you've probably covered this in other classes, that that crop coefficient is very empirical. Um, they usually have to be developed locally in your climate with your crops, and they can't be transferred around very well. Like you can't take a KC curve like this from Colorado and apply it to a field in California, right? They're usually very specific. So, but they've been a good first approximation of actual crop water use using weather data. And we see that formalized in two different standards. Uh, one is the um, FAO 56 technique from the, um, that's, that's, used sort of worldwide as the Penman-Monteith equation is used to calculate reference crop ET. There's the link to that. Lots and lots of good information in there. Uh, walks you through the whole uh, concept behind it and um, gives you lots of good examples. The other one that's used probably more widely in the United States is the ASCE standardized reference. Again, it's the same formulas. It's the Penman-Monteith. And you can see, uh, you'll also notice if you study both documents, they're written by basically the same people. So it's the same science behind both of them, just kind of, um, and, and they both make basically the same recommendations and use the same formula. It's just um, some very subtle differences. So we're going to mainly, from the, for the rest of this talk, use the ASCE methods that you see here. And I've posted the link to that document and uh, it's also on our website. So how the ASCE defines this hypothetical reference crop um, is shown here. Um, you know, and it's defined as an ET rate from a uniform surface of dense actively growing vegetation having a specified height and surface resistance, not short of soil water, and representing an expanse of at least 100 meters of the same or similar vegetation. So uh, that gives you the idea of what, what they're talking about, a well-watered vegetation surrounded in, in sort of a large expanse. And ASCE has two formula. 
one that they call the short crop or some people call the grass reference where the height is assumed to be 0.12 meters and then the tall crop reference where the height is assumed to be 0.5 meters which is similar to full cover alfalfa. For both of these cases they also assume the surface albedo of 0.23 okay, for the calculation of net radiation. So here you see the uh, a copy right out of the ASCE manual. You see the penman monteith equation up there at the top. Slightly different form, which we'll talk about here in a minute. It's the same equation. They've just rearranged a few terms and added some coefficients. Um, and then you see the definition of all the um, different terms. Now, one thing you'll notice that's different from what we've looked at previously was that there's two... Um, constants up there in the equation c sub n and c sub d and you can see that those are um, numerators that change the reference type right so they're different for small crops and large crops and they're also different depending on which time step you're using if you're using if you're trying to calculate daily et which is most common or hourly et so what they've done here with the ASCE formula is giving you one general form and then you change CN and CD depending upon your particular application. And they give you this nice table here that you see here in the top. Uh, you can see there if you're calculating things on a daily basis uh, for the tall crop for example, CN is 1600 and CD is 0.38 and that will give you output in millimeters per day. And here you can see the assumptions um, or all the other constants that go into the calculation. And a lot of that should seem pretty familiar to you. It's like stuff we've covered other parts of the class. It's based on that same aerodynamic theory that we're, we're used to using. Again, you know, here you see on the top the more traditional expression of the pittman monteith formula, and on the bottom you see the um, ASCE version. The top one is shown in terms of latent heat flux. You know, farmers don't know what latent heat flux is or don't really, uh, shouldn't say they don't know. That's not what they're interested in. They're interested in crop water use in millimeters per day, right? Because that's how much irrigation water they need to apply. And so the bottom formula, you can see, looks very similar. But it, uh, again, uh, gives you the output in millimeters and either millimeters per hour or millimeters per day, depending on whether it's a day, uh, hourly or daily. And, uh, and then so those, some of those other terms in there are making adjustments for time step and, and reference crop. Uh, one thing to remember um, that we haven't mentioned, but I think we talked about it earlier, was that when you're executing these formulas on a daily time step, that is you're trying to estimate evaporation in millimeters per day and you're using daily weather data right not hourly uh, the soil heat flux term g is typically removed from the equation and what the assumption is is that the heat that's absorbed during the day is lost during the night so g is sort of a uh, has a net zero effect so anytime you apply these formulas on a daily basis you remove g when you apply them on an hourly basis you have to leave them in and I think we talked about earlier that for the ASCE formula, they basically just assume that G is 10% of net radiation. So again, here's the, the formula that we're going to, uh, going to use and gives you a nice sort of operational form there. If you have that formula and you have that table um, and you have weather data from your location, you're ready to go. Now, some people have done a nice job of making sort of a recipe on how to do the calculations. We know that, um, backing up, we know from previous work that we've done that that net radiation term is a real pain, right? There's a lot of steps to get that. And uh, so it's, sometimes it's nice to have somebody just sort of lay that out for you in a recipe form, and that's done by this David Dukes and his colleagues here at uh, Florida. And um, I put a link there if you want to kind of go check that out. Now, they do it for grass because uh, they're interested in turf. 
but it's still a sort of a nice little handy extension document that shows you how to do the calculations. Uh, certainly you can use the ASCE and FAO documents as well. So here's an example of the daily reference crop ET calculation using the ASCE tall crop formula. This is in MATLAB and this um, live editor sheet is also posted on our website. So here you see our inputs. This is for Lamar, Colorado on July 10th, 2018, which is just a brutally hot day. We had kind of record ET numbers around the state back in 2018 on that day, so I thought it would be fun to sort of look at it. You can see that there's the maximum and minimum temperature. Got over uh, 35 degrees C, that's over 95 degrees Fahrenheit. We had its fairly dry air, it was almost perf a clear sky, so lots of radiation. And you also see the wind run was 342 kilometers per day. Now, that's the units that COAGMET, our Colorado Weather Network, provides. We'll have to adjust that, as you'll see. And then I put in my CD and my CN for the tall crop formula right out of the table. So this part on the, we're starting off, the first step is to calculate daily net radiation. And we've had a whole lecture and video on that. So this is just a repeat of what we've already done. So I'm not going to spend any time on that. But that's the first and, def, and, and you know, definitely the hardest part of the calculation. So there you see on the right, doing all those daily net radiation calculations. Finally, we get down here to the bottom and we see the net radiation is 15.4 megajoules per meter squared per day, right? So that's our net available energy that's in the energy balance. And remember that we assume that on a 24 hour basis that soil heat flux is zero. So all of that energy is going in to um, evaporate water by latent heat flux or heat the air, right? So it's got to be balanced by H and LE. So here's the new calculations that you have to do when you apply the daily formula. So first thing I did was convert my wind speed to meters per second. So I took my wind run, converted it to meters, and divided it by the number of seconds in a day. And you can see my average wind speed was about four meters per second. And you know, it's about nine miles per hour or so. And uh, then I calculate my average air temperature from the maximum minimum air temperature. I calculate my atmospheric pressure based on elevation. I calculate the slope of the saturation vapor pressure curve from that average air temperature that I calculated above. That came out to be about 0.2 kilopascals per degree C. Estimate the psychometric constant from pressure. And then finally I saw for my uh, saturation vapor pressure. And what you do is you find the saturation vapor pressure at maximum air temperature and at minimum air temperature. And, uh, and then take the average of that. So that gives me my saturation vapor pressure. Now, along with uh, these new numbers and my weather data, I can actually solve the formula. So there you see it there at the very bottom. That's right out of the ASCE manual. The Penman-Monteith equation. You can see the coefficient CN and CD coming in there. And uh, get my evaporation rate at 12, about 12 and a half millimeters, right, per day. That's a lot of evaporation. You know, that's a half inch, right? At this time of the summer, the crop coefficient would be very close to one, right, for corn on uh, July 10th. And uh, so that's a lot of water, right, that's being used at, uh, under these kind of conditions. So um, basically what a lot of people do is they build these sets, this set of calculations into a spreadsheet or into an R program or whatever computing platform that you uh, are familiar with and like to use. They'll uh, pull in their weather data from a Ag Weather Network and solve for ETR. Just one thing I failed to mention is that these calculations of reference crop ET are often calculated for you uh, 
in Ag Weather Networks, including our co AgMet weather uh, data here in Colorado. So often you'll uh, see this done for you and it's available on a daily basis. Few caveats before we wrap things up. So the Penman Monteith equation is the standard for computing reference ET from weather data. It's used all over the world. It's been standardized by the FAO and ASCE. Uh, those simplifications and assumptions remove the need for a numerical solution of the energy balance equation. You know, Penman got the surface temperature out of the equation. And historically, that was really important because it really made the system, the equation, easy to use. And that was really important in 1948, where you were doing math with the slide rule. Uh, and certainly, um, you know, up till very recently, we didn't have a lot of readily available computing power. But with today's digital resources, you know, we could easily solve the full energy balance equation, there, like you see down there in the below form. There's really no need to make all the assumptions and simplifications inherent to the penman monteith equations. And it can be shown that these simplifications sometimes lead to errors, especially in really arid, hot environments like the Texas Panhandle. And that's, uh, if you're interested in that, you might look at this paper by Lascano, Van Bavel, and Evett, and uh, they show you there when the um, uh, penman monteith equation doesn't do so well and how using a numerical recursive method, which they call it here, um, gives you a more correct answer. And so those of us that uh, in micrometeorology often kind of wonder if the penman monteith equation um, has sort of uh, done all the good that, it's, that it needs to do and that we need to move on. But there's still a lot to be said for having a standard that's applied worldwide so the data can be intercompared. So I still see a lot of value there. And I think that wraps it up here for the penman monteith equation. There's lots of lots of resources available. And I posted some additional papers on this topic uh, on our uh, website.